Okay, so let's continue on with commercial activities. Sierra Leone's economy is largely uh, informal with small scale marketing and trading of uh, basic commodities, especially clothes, cigarettes, uh, shoes, pots, pans, and mats. Women particularly denominate the market trade in foodstuffs. Major industries, food processing, especially of flour, oil, rice, and fish, is one of the major industrial activities in Sierra Leone. Mining was mining was for years dominant a dominant industry, especially in rutile, in rutile, broxonite and diamonds. Also, because of Sierra Leone's beautiful beaches and exotic wildlife, such as hippos, chimpanzees, and monkeys, the tourist industry once thrived. Since the beginning of the 1991 conflict, however. Uh, mine, official mining and tourism have stopped. Let's move on to the trade. Besides the cash crop listed above, illegal smug, illegally smuggled diamonds have become a dominant item of trade. High in value only to foreign countries, they've played a major part in subsidizing the rebellion that has spread across Sierra Leone. International marketeers who brought them who bought them came to recognize their role in the inevitably funding in the in, in, inevitably funding the conflict and publicly renounced any dealing in Sierra Leone diamonds yet small and easily concealed Sierra Leone diamonds are now simply carried across national borders where they are sold to the same national marketeers as Liberian or or Guinean in origin. Division of labor. Like most big cities, Sierra Leone's urban areas offer a variety of, of occupational specialists, um, especially in small scale trading, government, and industry. Downtowns, uh, down, downtowns in the national economy, however, have made full salary jobs extremely hard to procure especially if one's family is not well connected. Village uh, level occupations are dominated by farming, but include traders, hunters, midwives, marketeers, religious specialists, educators, policemen, and blacksmiths. Young men aged 18 or 29 are often attracted to mining jobs and the idea of striking it rich. But the poor and exploitive conditions of the work often make their ventures short or seasonal lasting between a few months and several years let's go on to the social stratification classes and castes so the Leonian society is in some way a stratified one the traditional elite families are those who can trace descent usually through the father's line to a warrior or hunter who first settled in the area these families can then control and administer land a valuable asset in a subsistence in a subsistence society which puts them in a, an advent an advantageous relationship to a non, to non land land holders people who want to acquire the right to farm must show respect to an elder from from his fa from this family usually but not always a male who may then grant them use of the land Colonial administrators in some ways exacerbated these differences between people and favoring those elite families who supported their agenda and urban employment opportunities, political appointments, and the education. Symbols of social uh, stratification. Some Sierra Leoneans will claim that one of the most persistent and negative impacts of colonialism was to pass along a test for Western values and European goods and the belief that everything African is relatively inferior. Thus, one indicator of a high social status is the ac accumulation and display of Western accoutrements, Western clothing, English speech, st satellite video, st satellite television, and Mercedes-Benz cars, or increasingly sport utility vehicles. Let's go on to the political life. Government under the terms of the constitution, uh, executive power is vested uh, in the president who is directly elected by the people. 
The president appoints a cabinet of ministers responsible for various government departments. There is also multi-party legislative power vested in, a, in an 80-member parliament whose members are elected to five-year terms. Paramount chiefs serve in district councils, which in turn elect representatives at the legislature. Uh, finally, there is a system of courts which, with a just, with a chief justice as head. Leadership and political officials. So the Leonian political customs are often referred to as patrimonial, in that elected officials become patrons to other voter base, the clients. Clients expect patrons to share some of the benefits of the all entitlements of their office and in turn give them electoral support. This system became somewhat strained in the uh, in the last 30 years of the 20th century as widespread political corruption drained many resources that would otherwise have been distributed. Yet in general, the Leonians respect almost any high-ranking officials, regardless of their political affiliation. Deference, a deference may be shown upon meeting with a slight bow, formal speech, and supporting the right arm with the left when shaking hands. Let's go on to the social problems and control. In March 1991, an attack on a small southern village by a group of armed Sierra Leone, uh, a group of armed Sierra Leoneans, L L Liberians, and Burkinabes, calling themselves the revolutionary, the revolutionary United Front (RUF), began what has become a nine-year civil conflict. Tens of thousands of people have lost their lives and almost all of the population are, has at one time been displaced, either within or across the national boundaries. Though initially supported by the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, the RIUF later claimed its own populist political reform agenda to end corruption, reduce reliance on foreign aid, and usher in peace between all ethnic groups. Dramatic violence waged against innocent civilians, however, and the failure of government action, including genuine political reforms, concessions granted to the RIUF to produce a consistent, consistent peace, has fueled popular skepticism about the legitimacy of the URF claims. Unlike conflicts in Europe and other parts of Africa, the Sierra Leonean war was largely uh, avoided avoided ethnic divisiveness. Most analysts contribute the current uh, violence to a mix of war-inspired, uh, socially marginalized youth fighting, continued exclusion, and increased criminal control over the highly profitable illicit diamond trade. A, pro a problematic legacy of the war will certainly be the large number of guns and light weapons that have entered Sierra Leone since the breakup of the Soviet Union. A Kalash Kalashnikov rifles usually channeled into Sierra Leone by foreign arms merchants can be bought for several dollars. Their widespread prevalence coupled with the intense poverty of the country is a virtual guarantee that extortion, highway banditry, and attacks on civilians will remain a dire social problem for years to come. Let's look at the military activity. Sierra Leone's military is currently attempting reorganization. There has been an estimated 45,000 total combats that previously made up the different factions of the war. Ex-Sierra Leone army soldiers, civilian militias, and RIUF rebels. Few of these have followed have followed up on agreements made to disarm and return to civilian life. Nigeria maintains some troop presence in the country and a force of over 10,000 United Nations peacekeepers is currently in place, although their mandate was proven somewhat limited. Let's move on to the social welfare and change programs. Steady economic decline coupled with rising international debt has severely limited Sierra Leone's ability to provide basic social welfare programs to its citizens. Smuggling, corruption, wild, 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 
worldwide recession and the large informal economy have all caused real problems to official attempts to remedy the situation. Structural adjustment policies by the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank have often further exacerbated these problems uh, by increasing the income disparity between people and, ori and orienting the economy toward the repayment of loans rather than the subsidization of basic public services. Non-government organizations and other associations. The state's declining ability to meet basic health education, basic health, education, welfare needs has meant a, a corresponding increase in the number and activities of non-government organizations in the country. There are a wide variety of local and international NGOs who compete for the funding from international donors in order to implement projects in economic and infrastructure development, health and sanitation, agriculture and education. Most of their programs are vertical, so because they are designed and funded by external agencies uh, according to Western priorities. Um, since 1991, international relief agencies have become uh, an even bigger presence, bringing aid to Sierra Leone refugees and internally disp displaced people who have fled the violence surrounding their homes. Let's look at the gender roles and statuses. Division of labor by gender, women are the backbone of Sierra Leone's labor. Men do the physical, physically intense work by clearing fields and plowing swamps. But planting, harvesting, weeding, gathering wood, cooking, cleaning, marketing, and childcare are duties often shouldered by women. Young children, especially girls, are encouraged to help their parents with minor household chores and farm work, and early in life take pride in their ability to contribute to the welfare of the household. Let's look at the relative, the relative status of women and men. The relative status of women and men is a bit paradoxical. Now, on the surface, they seem to have low status. Women technically live under the authority of the men they marry, have fewer legal rights, less informal education, and lower literacy rates. Yet, in reality, women's relationship to men is more complementary than subordinate, due mostly to the considerable power and solidarity gained through the collective uh, form formed by the near universal membership in the women's budu. And Sade and Sade societies. Though some have appointed, though some have pointed out that women's societies stratify as much as they unify, others have noted that they provide substantial resources and skills that allow women to independently manage problems and control their lives. A society can, for example, autonomously determine laws that regulate proper social conduct. And relations between genders with codes as binding uh, for men as they are for women. A girl's initiation gives her womanly status, allowing her to marry and bear children, activities which help her gain further prestige. A less tangible but important benefit is that society membership often ensh enshrouds women with a certain mystic that confound, confound, confounds men. Who become unable to explain the whim, the womenly knowledge and secrets over which the society presides. Let's go on to marriage, family, and kinship. Marriage for all Sierra Leoneans, marriage is a mark of adult maturity and brings considerable prestige to both bride and groom. Special customs vary by ethnic group and social economic status, but usually begin when a man is able to assemble enough bride price often a mix of money and fine clothes to give to the prospective bride and her family he may be able to amass this himself but often has to ask his father and his father's brothers for support almost all marriages used to be arranged between families sometimes while the girl was still young increasingly love marriages are more common especially among those who have been to school let's look at the domestic unit the basic household structure is is an extended family organization for the majority of people around the farm and its rice production. Many households are polygamous when where a husband may have more than one wife 
the first or senior wife usually has some authority over junior wives such such as in training and organizing them in a functional unit monogamy is also common especially among uh, urban and christian families Sierra Leoneans love children larger family to accumulate wealth by increasing a large and diverse labor pool by gaining bride price for its daughters and by strategically marrying of children to create alliances with other families inheritance inheritance laws are of are most often favor the male heirs upon the death of a male household ahead rights of inheritance usually pass first to the eldest living brother this is most often land and personal property but may even include the deceased wives if they are willing and any if they are willing and any young children if they are if there are no living brothers inheritance passes to the eldest uh, eldest adult son there are expectations there are, there are expectations to this most notably among the coastal uh, shibro women who may be heads of household households village chiefs or even uh, lineage heads uh, this is not unusual in those circumstances for women to become trustees of land or property let's look at the kin groups kin groups works kin kinship networks are extremely important in every mat in everyday matters in that one is obli is obligated to assist one's family members throughout life the majority of the people are patrilineal and and so sons and sometimes daughters usually obtain rights to land through their father's side kin groups also play an important part in hearing legal cases and settling disputes among uh, disputes before they are referred to the neutral third party thus upon marriage a man and a woman may each uh, prefer to settle near their own kin as this offers them to distinct to distinct political and economic advantages though rights and response responsibilities exist on both sides of the families of one's family maternal uncles are often a particularly important figures offering both uh, obligations and entitlements to an individual now let's move on to the social socialization infant care mothers carry infants close to them at all times strapped to their backs by a brightly colored cloth or lapa babies are breastfed on demand often for well over a year although other so, solid foods usually rice pulp may be introduced at a young age both the extended family and the community share responsibility in rearing infants and children it's not even unusual for a mother to give her child to a trusted friend or relative though she of course would still play an active role in the child's life child rearing and education providing uh, them can providing them can afford school fees most parents would try to send their children at least seven years of formal schooling this is often western style education although arabic schools are an option in many areas outside the formal system the men and women societies have historically provided important instruction for proper behavior boys may learn the arts of proper male social conduct uh, including uh, conflict mediation meditation and uh, forest survival girls similarly learn crucial social household and childbearing skills to prepare them for womanhood traditionally this instruction could last more than a year increasingly however pressures from the schools and urban environments have shortened this time to a month or less let's go to the higher education Many schools outside Freetown, both primary and secondary, have been closed since the beginning of the 1991 conflict. There has been thus, thus arisen some social concern over what the effects may be of a generation raised without access to formal education. This is one advantage recognized by refugees who have crossed over into Guinea and Liberia. Relief agencies usually provide free schooling for refugee children and youth. Let's look at the ethic. Uh, Sierra Leoneans are 
as a rule are extremely polite and manner conscious much attention is given especially in urban areas to one's neatness of dress and style of presentation courteous and eloquent greeting are a way of life elders are especially respected the good host is always a, a giving host one who will carry one who will call any passerby to join in a meal by a wholehearted come let's eat it's polite as a guest to have some food on the plate thank thanking the host prof, profusely for his or her generosity let's go to the religion religious reports often list Sierra Leoneans as 60% Muslim 10% Christian and 30% indigenous believers this kind of numbers often mask the degree of religious belief in Sierra Leone that may be flexible and accommodating one can go to church on Sunday uh, for example and still make a sacrifice to one's ancestors for good fortune unlike Muslim and, and likewise Muslim rituals may appear to dominate in some areas yet this can also become mixed with indigenous idea or customs Let's look at the uh, religious uh, practices. Besides Muslim and Christians, holy leaders, there are a number of relig indigenous religious practices who are, who are able to, in, uh, to meditate with the spirit world. These include diviners, healers, men's, men and women's society elders, and witchcraft specialists. Rituals and holy places, churches, mosques, society clearings in the, in the forest or town, occupy central positions in Sierra Leone's religion, religious life and serve as a focal point for organizing religious activities, especially toward God or ancestral spirits. Water is often considered, uh, considered especially important and many religious rituals take place near the edges of lakes, rivers and streams. Let's look at death and afterlife. As social burial customs may vary region or by religion, yet practically all these encompass a farm conviction in the existence of God and the spirit world and especially in the abilities of one's deceased ancestors to intervene in the activities of everyday life sacrifices rituals embrace em, em, remembrances and prayers are made in order to enlist ancestors support and good behavior medicine and healthcare the United Nations estimates that Sierra Leone has the highest rate of death in the world and has the second highest infant mortality rate um, life expectancy at birth in 1995 was only 34 years uh, down significantly from previously improving figures even factoring in war related violence Marelia is still the number one health threat um, uh, uh, bloody diarrhea tetanus measles polio are also a epidemic in some areas access to clean water drinking water and adequate such sanitation especially in the rural countryside is limited medicinal facilities are extremely strained and are continuing to decline especially since 1991 conflict began yet even before this the centrally organizing national health service reached only an estimated 35 percent of the population with less than 1% of the annual government expenditures being located to health care. There are also an array of widely used indigenous practices, including midwives, broken bone specialists, herbalists, society leaders, and Muslim-based ritual specialists. Let's look at the secular holidays. Outside of the major Muslim and Christian holidays, Sri Leoneans also celebrate New Year's Day, January the 1st, National Independence Day, which is 27th of April, and Labor Day, 1st of May, and Nash National Day, which is 9th August. Arts and Humanities. Uh, the government funding for the arts has been extremely limited and most art artists are self-supported. Uh, literature. There is, there is rich and lively tradition of storytelling across Sierra Leone. The most famous storytellers are sometimes uh, Oh, the most famous storytellers can manage to earn a living from their trade, though mostly these traditional or informal affairs and start when children gather around an elder under the full moon once the evening chores are done. They are critically acclaimed Sierra Leone novels such as The Last Mahatan of the Alusin Dunbar by uh, Shine Koka. Let's look at the graphic arts. Among the graphic arts practiced Sierra Leone's 
a wood carving, tie dyeing, batik printing, textile and fabric design and basket making. Uh, let's look at the um, performances. Uh, a few uh, famous Sierra Leone musicians have gained widespread appeal both at home and abroad such as S.E. Rogers, uh, Calendar, Dr. Oloho and Sali Salia. There are even a national dance troupe that travels around the world. To a large extent, however, the participation in the arts is widely diffused and informal. Dancing, painting, singing, storytelling, tie-dyeing, weaving, drumming are widely practiced skills, the learning of which is often begun in childhood. State of this physical and social sciences. For a Bay College, now the University of Sierra Leone, was the first university in West Africa and was historically one of the centers of African scholars of law, medicine, and education. Its operation is currently severely strained, however, from the inadequate funds, decaying infrastructure, and poorly paid professors. Several teachers' colleges around the country have similarly become either strained or closed, especially since the 1991 conflict. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I just want, I want to thank you so much for uh, if you've uh, made it this far. Uh, once again, uh, this has been read to you by yours truly, Christine, courtesy of Exhibit Africa Ubuntu Initiative, compiled by everyculture.com. Until our next series, please don't forget to join us. Uh, we're moving on to another, we shall be moving on to another country under letter S, so please stay tuned to figure out which one that will be. Take care and ciao for now.